Bradford. Hi, this is Greg from Paradise Lost, and you're listening to Heavy Demons Radio Show. So dear Greg, mm-hmm. Medusa, yeah. Yeah. what shall Paradise Lost fans expect from this heavy doom slash powerful record? Uh, well, if it's Paradise Lost fans you're talking about, I think um, style-wise it's somewhere between Gothic and Shades of God albums. Yeah. I would have said, I don't know if people would agree, but... Um, but obviously brought up to date with the things we've learned over the years, you know, I guess. Uh, so yes, it's a Doom album, I would say. Um, you know, despite long songs on there, I guess, the opener is eight and a half minutes long. Um, it's, uh, it's quite riff orientated, you know. Um, and Nick is doing a lot of growling on this one. It's only two songs that you've seen clean on. So, you know, so it's, uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. I've noticed that Nick's uh, uh, lyrics are less personal and more like uh, oriented towards like um, uh, general things like religion or uh, uh, global, global things. Yeah, global yeah. things uh, and the, 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 the differences between like living nowadays and like in the past with ancient gods uh, and yeah. religious. I think it's just a sign of the times. Yeah, you know it's. Um, there's more inspiration in what's happening in the world at the moment than there is, you know, it's affecting everybody. So it's um, very different from 97. And yeah, so there's a lot to write about, yeah. I guess, you know, um, and these things affect you personally as well. So obviously there's a, it's, it's a big topic. You know. And uh, why did you choose to uh, do uh, Doom's large records in 2017? What do you recall about like the 80s and what do you miss? About well, the 80s? Um, well, weirdly, the, 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 no, yeah, I do. The, the scenes were very small. People remember, people talk about them and they you know, like, I don't know, like the UK scene with Buzz um, and Ball Thrower and Napalm Death and the Arkansas. Yeah. It was very small. There was only a handful of people in each country. And we used to have trade tapes with each other and it was kind of very personal. And it, it's, it's, if, if we see each other these days, we're all still the friends. All those bands are still the friends, you know. I mean, from, from Entomb to Volta to whoever, you know, Sam Ale, any of the bands that were around then are still friends. So it was kind of a very small, close scene. And I, I miss that, that it's so big now. There's so many bands. It's like, you know, if I was a new band today, it kind of annoyed me that you couldn't have that close knit community, you know. Uh, but the reason we did a, a, a Doom record now is more to do with uh, Beneath Broken Earth from the last record. It was the last song that we wrote for the, for the play we in. And um, we just really loved it. When we did it, we thought, oh, we should do an album like this. And uh, do you find any differences uh, between the reaction from the audience, uh, like in America and in Europe, to your music? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it depends where in Europe. Um, yeah. Europe and yeah, I mean, UK audiences are kind of similar to American audiences. Uh, Southern Europeans are different to Northern Europeans, you know. I would say Southern Europeans, you know, Italian audiences, Spanish audiences, Portuguese audiences, very similar to South America. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It is, it's that passion, I guess, you know. Um, and I guess Northern European audiences are a little bit more reserved. But that's just... That's probably nature, you know, more than anything. It's cultural. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the British are very reserved. I'm very reserved, so if I go to a show, I kind of just stand there, you know, so. Oh. What do you recall about the, the late 70s, early 80s in the UK with, uh, you know, punk rock, new wave, crust scene? Mm. Uh, well, my older brother was um, a punk in the late 70s and a skinhead in the early 80s and he had a huge vinyl collection and I used to go in his bedroom and steal his records <laughs> and play them, yeah, yeah, and that's how I got into music. So the first music I heard was like hardcore punk, yeah. hardcore punk yeah. boy music, skinhead music as well, street about that, yeah, 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 stuff like that. And um, then as, a, you know, I was, I was a young kid then, I was 10, 12, and then as time went on to the mid 80s, the, uh, the punk scene Kind of got more metalized. Yeah, bands like Broken Bones and uh, Antisect and uh, English Dogs—they were becoming more metal. 
and that's how I got into metal through the punk bands. So, that, so I, yeah, then I went to crust punk, which turned into grindcore and death metal. And I, I found out about Black Sabbath when I was about 17. Yeah. You know, most people were into it way before that, but you know. So I and I got into Black Sabbath through Candlemas Epicus doing the Metallica. Ah, okay. <laughs> and Trouble <laughs> through you know. through the years. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I did it back to front with yeah, metal. Yeah, yeah. You know. What about the new wave influence into the old paradise last like 20 years ago? Uh, one second uh, post, uh, mm. you were very influenced by the British new wave. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah Sister yeah. of Mercy. Yeah. Well, even, even on our Gothic album yeah. in like 1990, we were influenced by stuff like that, but it just wasn't production wise, it didn't show, you know. So, we, you know, a song like Eternal from the Gothic album was very much Sister of Mercy influenced. But, done in a metal way you know so we've always had that kind of influence because we that scene in the UK was in the same town that we towns that we grew up in yeah, Leeds yeah, you yeah, know yeah. it's all the goth scene and uh, and that new wave scene was all around us so you, you kind of it's inevitable that you're going to pick up some influences from there and um, it was mainly the dark the darkness of it you know the minor keys and the uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it was all that and it's it rubbed off on us as much as metal and punk did so it all went into the blending pot and you know over the years when we did one second and stuff like that it's just you just want to try different things and I think that's important for any musician who's doing it for a long time to um, try things out and diversify otherwise it can get boring for you and you stagnate and you run out of influences and, you know so you should try things out you know. yeah and recently I've been conducting an interview with uh, Anders from Catatonia mm -hmm. and when I asked uh, who, as a, who is your main inspiration as a guitar player, he told me Greg. Oh. <laughs> right. oh. But what do you think about being so influential in the metal scene nowadays? Uh, you know, I've, I've heard it off a few people and it's very flattering, but um, it's, none of this is ever planned. You, know, you, don't, you don't set out playing guitar thinking, right, I'm going to influence people. You don't know, you're just trying things out and I'm a self-taught guitarist and I learned guitar just by listening to different records and I had very diverse musical taste. So my guitar playing was not very conventional. It sounded very different to lots of other things. So I guess if you sound very different, people are either going to love you or hate you. So I guess the people that were influenced by me liked, liked it and obviously there's a lot of people who think I'm not, you know, so, so you know, it's just, um, it's just, if, if, if you try, if, if you stand away from the crowd, you're going to get attention somehow, good or bad. And are you planning like a tour now? Well, we're planning it. Um, we don't have the dates yet, but we know when it's going to be. We know um, the beginning of October, right up to Christmas, is going to be Europe, all of Europe and Australia. So we do. All of Europe for eight weeks and then go to Australia for about two or three weeks. So it's, that's all those three months. Yeah. How will be the art work of Medusa? Well, that's a good question because we are, again, it's something that we are going backwards and forwards. And while we're out here, we're just getting emails every day with this. And we're trying to do something, um, something in, in, a little bit colourful, something in purples and stuff like that. And, uh, Maybe a little bit retro, something like Born Again oh. by Black Sabbath, something something around that, but then linked in with the title somehow as well. So, probably snakes. <laughs> what like uh, final message and greeting would you give to Italian fans of Paradise Lost? Thanks for the support over the years. I mean, it's, it's a long time. It's 30 years next year. Yeah. And I didn't even realise, and we were re reminded of it yesterday. And uh, you know, it's a long time to. Uh, still be coming and doing interviews and people being interested so I feel very fortunate yeah, that do we have fans that uh, are still interested. Do, do you know any Italian music? Uh, yeah, yeah, one of my favourite extreme bands, uh, extreme music band, is uh, The Secret. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was on tour when they played some shows in England. Ah, okay, they played over there. And uh, I wanted the shirt so I had to one of my, get one of my friends to buy me a shirt at the show. And, uh, bring it back for me so yeah I, I really like them I think it's a great blend of um, black metal and hardcore and you know, it's really interesting stuff for me. Greg from Paradise Last. <laughs>